Let's talk about mercury poisoning. So mercury is primarily absorbed through inhalation, ingestion, or through the skin. The main risk factors which you'll need to look for are people that work in dentist offices, uh, people that work in manufacturing of fluorescent light bulbs, thermometers and barometers, as well as people that work in industries such as electroplating, as well as people that are consuming mercury-containing fish. Now, mercury-containing fish is the major risk factor for organic mercury toxicity, which is a little different from the other forms, which are elemental and inorganic mercury. And the important thing to remember and why there's a distinction is that organic mercury toxicity does not have a specific treatment. So, the mercury does cause damage to the lungs, the brain, the skin, and the kidneys. So clinical features of acute mercury toxicity include a fatal interstitial pneumonitis. Otherwise, you can have cough, and dyspnea, and chest pain. There can be nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea, as well as conjunctivitis and dermatitis. For more chronic exposure, you can see swollen salivary glands and excessive salivation. There can be diaphoresis and hair loss. Some of the neurologic symptoms can include tremor, as well as a characteristic neuropsychiatric syndrome called erythism mercurialis, where someone can have personality changes, anxiety, irritability, uh, fearfulness, shyness, memory loss, insomnia, depression, and fatigue. And rarely there can also be some mild kidney tubular dysfunction. There's a classic presentation in small children called acrodynia, where they will present with a body rash and extremity edema, and that's followed by skin desquamation, irritability, photophobia, fever, insomnia, and diaphoresis. In order to diagnose the disease, you have to suspect it with the risk factors as well. And in acute cases, the blood mercury level is quicker and can detect the disease. And in chronic cases, the 24-hour urine mercury collection is more accurate. So if it's elevated, what do you do? You remove the patient from any sources of mercury. And specifically, if the level is above 100 in either the blood or 24-hour urine collection, you can treat with chelation. And chelation will increase the urinary excretion of mercury. The first-line treatment depends on the country. In the US, it's succimer or a DMSA. And you can also use dimercaparol uh, as an alternative treatment. Uh, again, note that for organic mercury toxicity, such as from eating mercury contaminated fish, there is no specific treatment such as chelation. In terms of prognosis, the pulmonary and renal syndromes will resolve better, and the neurotoxicity can be less likely to resolve and can result in a profound disability.